Morning folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. And we're at the beautiful Chigbra Fisheries. Look at this, Rook Hall. Uh, this is only late February, believe it or not, but it's almost like a summer's day. We've got seven or eight degrees on the um, on the car this morning, uh, temperature wise. Very, very light ripple, forecast for a little bit more. Conditions couldn't be better for a bit of uh, spring fishing. And with spring fishing, we're always thinking of just one thing, and that's buzzers, and the first of the buzzers, the first of the coronamid hatches. And it's starting to happen, especially on this lake at the moment. Um, as we go around the water this morning, you'll start to see one or two of these buzzers hatching. The fish are definitely responding to them. I don't know if you're looking over my shoulder as I'm talking about this. You can probably see the odd fish starting to rise and roll. And we're going to try and catch them at all three depths. So we're going to try to imitate all three parts of this life cycle of this coronamid, from the bloodworm to the buzzer larvae itself, all the way through to the fly emerging on the surface and hopefully this afternoon when this ripple gets up a little bit of dry fly sport but we'll go through the gear go through the kit and go through the different setup in a second but i hope you enjoy the video right well i set up three setups um gonna go for three different approaches this morning or today depending on the conditions and you can see at the moment it's very very flat calm um so initially i've set up with a an indicator rig um with a straight line stroke washing line rig and dries um, and looking at this conditions and it is warm for the time of the year um, and looking at what the fish are doing I'm thinking probably going to be higher up in the water so washing line or dry flies as opposed to your indicator rig but I'll, I'll just talk you through it they're all based around the buzzers all based around these coronamids as we were talking about and the indicator rig here is just simply a seven weight these are all seven weight well i've got two seven weight t2 set up here and a four weight there as well for the dries um which would rocket lines rocket floaters eight pound fluoro on both of these nymphing setups the indicator setup there is basically 10 feet of fluorocarbon indicator two foot below that is a buzzer another two foot below that is a blood worm all in size tens i'll put some little diagrams of stuff up for you when we come to use the methods i'll talk you through them a little bit better um, and that is very much going to hold there you know pop it out there and it's going to hold a level and it's going to fish at that level um, alongside these edges alongside the uh, um, drop-offs here uh, the only thing that concerns me this morning about fishing that method is these fish are very very high up I wasn't expecting to see quite so many fish moving but they are popping up all the time and I'm thinking that that indicator might sit down below them too much we'll give it a little whirl and we'll see how we get on but I, I'm not uh, uh, I don't hold out a lot of hope for that working the next setup is the one I will think will score today um, it's a washing line setup so I've got again rocket floater t2 seven weight rod uh, and I've got a 12 foot leader with two droppers tied onto it and obviously the point fly as well equally spaced at about four foot a piece top dropper I've gone for a little cruncher little natural cruncher and I'll put links or something up here to them, the time videos um, the second dropper down is a buzzer and the point fly on for a little fab just to keep everything up nice and high and just going to work it through these edges as these fish are moving because they're very obviously coming up and just taking flies third setup um, is the one i would favor um, stroke floater dry fly setup 10 foot leader six pound fluorocarbon little emerger on the end and that we will start to use when this clouds up a little bit and this ripple gets up and i think that that is really going to score but we'll go from the methods we might move around the lake a little bit, see what happens, but I think we're going to start off with this washing line method and take it from there. But I hope you enjoy it and hopefully we'll get a few for the camera. Right, let's give it a go along this edge here, see what happens. There's a nice shallow edge here and it drops off just out there. And the fish normally just hang on this drop off. A little bit of ripple across here, which I'm hoping will just help presentation a bit. Pop that out, let it settle. And then just a couple of long pulls, leave it again. Those, that buzzer and that crunch are just waft about. Just see if something will pick that up just under the surface. This will work much better when there's a breeze pushing us along. It's a little bit calm, a little bit flat. A 
fish there though. It just screams dry as I don't know why I'm messing around with this. Screams dry look at them out there. Gotta change, gotta change, gotta change, gotta change. This is just, this just absolutely screams dry flies. Get that dry on there. Get that out there. Plenty of fish moving. It's working lovely. It screams it, then it absolutely screams it. Lovely big chick with a rainbow. First chuck with a dries. Right, a nice breeze up now, so let's give this washing on a go across this breeze. See if we can just get it moving nice and steady across the breeze and get those buzzers fishing. Properly. Straighten everything up. Just follow that breeze around, let that just sweep that round. Not anywhere near as many fish rising now, for whatever reason they've stopped. Bump there, he's on. Look at that first chuck. First chuck, he's had the buzz up. Perfect. Uh, they just stopped rising. He's had the uh, crisp packet buzzer on that middle dropper, which is good. Let's get that man in that round here. Come on. What a noddy. That's better. Okay, that's better. That's more like instant results on that. Hooks out in the net. That's that crisp packet. And he's away. Straighten up. It's almost in my face now, but that's all we want. And we're just going to let that wind push it back towards us. And we're just going to stay in touch. I'm not moving those at all. I'm letting the speed of the breeze do the work for me. It's just that breeze is pushing them flies back towards me. They're fishing absolute dead drift. Which is perfect speed for buzzers. Pull, just get the flies back up again as it comes over the ledge. I'm just going to give it a little dibble now, it's coming up into the shallows now, so don't let it pick up too much weed. 
I normally like fishing those right back to the rod tip but there's it's quite shallow here in front of me on this corner like same again straighten up just watching for that line to straighten out again just watching that flexing that line That's perfect. Pull. I'm in touch with those flies now. And then just a slow, slow, slow figure of eight. I wonder if this will fish better from those platforms where I can get a bit of left to right. Little touch there. Oh wow, what a take! What a take! Oh, that was on the buzzer. That was on that buzzer again. Slam that. Right, I've just replaced that cruncher on the top dropper with a size 12 crisp pack buzzer. So I've now got two buzzers on and a fab. I've gone a bit smaller because I want to keep everything up that bit higher especially it comes over this ledge here so I've just that top dropper just a bit smaller let's see what that does it gives us an extra fly both those fish that one landed and that one I lost but like that straight away both came on the, the crisp packet and that's off both those fish came on the crisp packet and that worked straight away not sure why it didn't stick and that was a very obvious indication and then the end of the fly line there just straightened out. Breeze is just dropping a bit. And again, look. Oh, come on. Why is that not sticking? Why didn't they stick? And normally with buzzers they're pretty much welded on but unless they both hit the fab those two Slowly, slowly, slowly. Look at this fish here, look. That's right across him. Oh, he's had it. He's only had it. Look at that. He only went and had it. And he's had that buzzer again. Middle crisp packet. Me chance. Oh, lovely, covered him, he had it. Excellent. Looks out in the net, and away he goes. He's still there. He is, just past that coot. Difficult getting turnover with that wind coming at you, but... There we go. <laughs> These takes are just incredible. Just ridiculous. <laughs> What's he had? He's had the fab this time. That's 
the first one that's had that fab. He just slammed it. Conscious with fabs and stuff, but they never got never quite as well hooked as they would be on the buzzers. Let's get a bit more careful with them. These in nicely. No, oh, yeah, another good fish. Is that a fab? Thank you very much. Perfect. Well, it's been a little bit frustrating so far. I've had a few fish, but not as many as I had expected. I um, don't know whether it's cooler wind or whether it's because the wind keeps changing direction, but yeah, it's been a little bit of a tricky start. Um, had a few fish in the washing line, a few fish in the dry. So I'm just going to try resting the swims and have a couple of fish and then rest them from a cup of coffee, have a warm up, um, and see if that makes a difference. But there's not as many fish moving. But we'll keep plugging away, see what happens. Okay, just moved up to the platforms. Get this come across this wind a little bit and I've gone back on the dry. There's one or two fish just popping their noses up again. It's, you know, light's gone down a lot as well. It's getting a lot more cloudy. And there's one or two fish just starting to show. Oh, straight away, look. Look at that, straight away. Well, that shows <laughs> when a bad, uh, bad little choice. They're just starting to pop up again. I just went back down to that size 14 emerger, and uh, there you are. Let's chuck. Just keep chopping and changing. Now they're feeding these fish, for whatever reason. There he is out in the net. Nice silver fish. Excellent. Well, I was going to call it a day, but these few fish moving along here, feeding on buzzers again. We'll see if we can winkle another one out. Further to the right. Perfect. They just come on this edge for some reason. It's just having a little second wind. Because it did go quiet for a while. That's got to be near them. Come on. Oh, it's him. He had that. Got him that time. Perfect.
There's that. <laughs> oh, she's just too good. Too good. Come on. Looks out in the net. Away you go. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. That was an interesting few hours fishing. Um, had a, a mixture of methods. Well, mainly the dries and the uh, uh, the washing line. Um, I, the, the bung didn't work at all, and that really surprised me. I expected in these sort of conditions. I mean, it's, it's, it's flat calm behind me now. I thought that'd have been the one that to get them, but uh, no, I wasn't interested in the static stuff. They wanted the 
I think they wanted it all too high up actually. I think everything needed to be that top two foot. But uh, it just shows when they get on those buzzers and they get honed in them and it really is important to get the right depth. And we just kept flitting between those two methods and just keep picking a few fish off here and there. We've tried three or four different spots. Uh, it's gone a bit quiet now, so I think I'm going to call it a day now. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It's been nice to get out again, nice to throw a line and get the cameras working again and uh, hopefully get a few more videos done for you this year. Um, so uh, as always, thanks for uh, supporting the channel and uh, if you enjoyed what you see, click like, click subscribe if you haven't already, feel free to share the videos about and uh, I look forward to catching up with you on the water pretty soon. Thanks then folks, bye bye.